there's one goal I set from the beginning of this project. It's to have it's to have no compromise on corn yield, but still have cover crop that will survive and, and have more options. Pair row or twin row corn, spacing out that high population a little bit might get me closer to achieving normal yield, where I can vary the row spacing, the pair row spacing, from eight inches down to single row, and then I'm gonna test that, and based on multiple years of testing that is where I'll settle in on eventually. Primarily, I did a cool season mix. So far, I'm, I'm happy with it, but I'm always looking for the next one I can add. Pair row width. If there isn't a significant yield difference, let's say between eight and four, I know the four will harvest quite easily. At least I'm anticipating it will. But that eight inch, I'm, I'm concerned about that because that has to pull those stocks in four inches from either direction. And with much speed, there could be years flying all over the place. I guess it'll depend on harvest ease versus yield and then make that decision after harvest. What we're trying to do is you're trying to grow corn and do something else, right? You're trying to grow corn and feed your livestock. You're trying to grow corn and feed your microbes in the soil and so on and so forth. So what, what is it that you're really trying to get to nail down with your 16 strategy. The soil was a little bit dry, so, uh, and we were planting these uh, with an offset three-point planter. And we got pretty good soil to seed contact that way. Uh, but even with that, uh, we were still in a partial drought and the catch was only okay on our cover crop. I was going for essentially a broadleaf cover crop mix uh, between our corn rows and so we have the peas that we used in our skip row, as well as our turnips, radishes, and there's some lentils in there too. If you want to grow the most corn you can possibly grow, 60 inch corn isn't for you. Our goal here is to try and approach what you can get on a standard row spacing, but you're never going to beat what you can get on a standard row spacing. So what, what is it that you're really trying to get to nail down with your 60 inch strategy? Uh, because that's going to really determine the, the type of covers that you're using, and it's really going to help to temper expectations for, for what you're going to get out of the system. A few years ago I was into 22 inch rows, saw that I was struggling to get cover crops established without, you know, just couldn't get the light. Opportunity arose so that we traded planters, got into 30 inch corn. First year I'm going into it thinking, wow, there's a lot more room there. The corn got tall and still the same shade factor, you know, you just don't get enough light for the cover crops to really to get any value out of it, realistically. The idea of 60 inch corn was out there and, and guys were trying it and having fair success, I think, doing it. We thought, let's get on the bandwagon here and, and give it a whirl, see what we can do. You know, we're really looking to better the soil as much as we can. If we can get as many different types of living roots in the soil as what we're really after, in the same token, we're gonna graze it also this fall after we harvest. Do we have enough out here to, to justify huge benefit in it? Probably not. We need to up the rates, but with the goal of soil health and a goal of grazing to get cattle integrated into the soil, I think it's a win-win all the way around it. We're out here in my pea canola field, peola they call it, intercropping basically two, two crops, two cash crops at the same time. Where I come up with the idea, or again, uh, pretty much off of Twitter. Most of the field is, is relatively weed free with uh, only a burn down chemical program. So it just all intrigued me to, to try it. You know, going forward with intercropping, I think it's definitely a viable thing to stay with it. I think you gotta really maybe pick and choose your fields that you put it on. Because if you're not gonna be able to use a lot of chemical, you wanna make sure you just kind of start with a a fairly clean field, low weed pressure, and I'd like to try to add in some oats into the mix next year. I actually got one strip of it that uh, does look promising where we have uh, oats, peas, and canola all together, so we'll just see what happens from there.
we're intentionally planting two different crops together and hoping to harvest both of them. What we're trying to do is find two crops that are gonna use nutrients at a little different ratio and use water hopefully at a little different time and try to maximize uh, your net productivity per acre. So you should be able to grow more with two crops than you could with either crop on its own. In these northern climates again, there's actually a couple of intercropping combinations that work out pretty well. I'd say the one that holds the most promise is chickpea flax. There's also a lot of people that look at field pea oats or field pea canola. Those are all crops that pair together fairly well. Bottom line is, if you're doing intercropping and your neighbor's doing intercropping, it's probably gonna look a lot different. Start on a small scale, see if it works, see if you like it, and then uh, maybe scale up and, and uh, go from there. And that's Intercropping 101. I got a hold of some camelina and started growing it here in Morris, Minnesota, where our lab is, and had both winter and spring types. But uh, the winter types, right off the bat, I realized were extremely uh, freeze hardy. Direct drilling mid-September is what we recommend, and row spacing, using a later maturity soybean for your given region, and that seems to work better in that relay system as well for improving soybean. Those are the big tips, and then by doing that, we're able to get two crops in a single growing season rather than just one crop. Mm -hmm.